You're on. <laughs> That's exactly what I was saying, Mulan. I'm already scared. That's what I'm telling you, Mulan. <laughs> yeah, good. No, but good. It's, it's good to be honest. Anyways, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa So we're very, I'm very, very blessed to have all my good friends here today. The one hiding behind the camera. So. I would not, not like to say my name. I would like to stay anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be anonymous. So we have Mulan Zishan Sab. Molana Nur Saab and Hafiz Abdul Karim. And uh, we're having a very calm discussion, a cool discussion on growth, learning, and uh, so on. So many of these young men, they were a little tense before coming on the camera. So I just told them, you guys are blessed. You've been in madrasas and you had your lives after madrasa for a few years. So you're in good you've been in good company you have good great minds and uh, people just want to hear us talk honestly right so let's get the ball rolling so we have some we, we don't even have a list of what we're going to talk about eh? no. well let's start making some dua we need some tawajju inshallah we can get something good done today so what's the topic no where should where should we start <coughs> where should we start even the mic is moving. Uh, I thought you were going to start off with uh, a little bit of prep on... Uh, well, on this is the prep. Stuff. I told these guys, I just told you right now. Okay. The prep as in, people just want to hear us talk. Okay. So just let's just start now. So, yeah, we're just, uh, I mean, I don't... If we just dive straight into the topic, mm -hmm, then, mm -hmm. then a louder we'll just speak topics. on what's most relevant. And mm -hmm. that is what mm -hmm. uh, we are going through, what is our current circumstances and situations. And yeah. how as Muslims and as believers, <coughs> keeping our faith, keeping our iman, going through the educational system and uh, living life without feeling like an outcast. And I think these are top the topics that have been, of course, discussed even before and so on, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yet feeling proud of our history because, of course, when we live in uh, countries that are foreign to us, when we moved into other countries then since the beginning of our time since we moved and since the narrative that we've seen on, seen on media as we were kids and growing up uh, we always felt like victims so I think that's one of the broader or more like specific topic that should be discussed which is sure. how we should feel proud of our history and not mm -hmm. feel like we've always been victims you know mm -hmm. and, like, rather we've been uh, we've actually had a very proud history something we should actually feel confident and we should walk with our heads up you know if someone was to discuss something to you we should be like yeah well we had our golden ages we had it, it just times goes back and forth you know yeah. so today was your day tomorrow's my day it's mm -hmm. just that's the way it is like um so rather than feeling victim we should um feel better about ourselves and also how this current fifa world cup qatar um how they uh how they were, because that is one of the Muslim countries, an Arab country, which is uh, generally speaking, which is uh, radicalized and so on, right? So how they dealt with the situation and what was the impact of them on the Western media. I'm not talking about the, the Fox smart. News. That's so a really smart thing you just said. Yeah. yeah, I'm not talking about the Fox News and so on, because we all know how they want to portray their yeah. message. But I'm saying in general, a normal Western like, you know, mm -hmm. what his impact was, mm -hmm. how they perceived an Arab country or a Muslim mm -hmm. country to be, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I think these are a few topics we can always mm -hmm. dive into. Again, these are just some things, some few thoughts that generically mentioned, but each mm -hmm. one we can discuss, That's inshallah. Deep. Deep. Why don't you talk about, like, what's one, one um, like, thing you struggled with and, like, like, your biggest thing that you struggled with and then you, how you came up out of it or, like, how you're dealing with it. If you want to do that. Otherwise, we can just go general. I mean, we can, I can quickly discuss of my little history, which is, um, and I don't know if other kids have been through it. Mm -hmm. The only reason we're talking about this so other, someone else, some other kid, if he listens to it, yeah. he can relate, you know? And if he can relate, like, it's something to connect ourselves with. And then you don't feel like you're the only one, right? It's like, yeah, others have been through it, how they lived with it. Maybe if the situation repeats, this is how to maybe deal with it. Alhamdulillah, since a young age for us, uh, my parents always had a very Islamic concern. And um, 
despite us going to public schools, they've always taught us what was right, what was wrong, or at least with regards to the things that was relevant to us. Like, they wouldn't make, up obviously, the topics that are complicated, um, but what was the basics, they would tell us what we were dealing with. So, I would imply that in school. I would apply that right away as I'm going. Like, for example, they would say, don't play with girls. Like, as a kid, you know, you don't really think about whether that's right or wrong, because you're just a young child. But, uh, that had an effect on me. And then when I would go to school, I'd be like, okay, I'm not going to play with girls. The same girls that I used to play with, they were best friends. But then the next day in school, I'm avoiding them. And they was like, what's wrong with you? Because like, I'm, I'm not allowed, right? And then I'll try to get my other Christian buddies to come with me. Hey, let's not play with the girls in the park and the slides. We'll just play separately, whatever, right? But when I did start to do that, I started feeling left out because there's only to a certain limit and certain time you can do that. People want to play again. Like you're trying to seclude, yeah. but then you can only do that for so long, right? Um, so I suggested my parents, myself, I'm like, I want to go to Islamic Madrasa. I want to become a hafiz. And one of the things that also had impact on that was attending the masjid and listening to bayanat and uh, lectures of scholars. Great scholars used to come from South Africa, for example, Mufti Ibrahim Desai. He would come to Edmonton when we were there, and he would speak to us and other scholars that would come. And these are things we would enjoy mainly because when you go to the masjid, they always had food after. So I'm just putting these ideas out there because these are things mm -hmm. that are, of course, attractive, relevant to us. And we love it. Kids love it. They're like, oh, there's food. So they would come listen to Bayan because there's food refreshments right after. So that has an effect. And um, so you'd come listen to the Bayan. And even if you're not paying attention, it has a, like the Iman gets into you, right? So because of that, I was like, I want to become Hafiz and so on. And then from there, like, I can't worry too much with this lot of public mm -hmm. views, public schools. As I was listening to you guys talk and uh, see where the discussion is going, I'm seeing two things. One is the power of influence, like how Abdul Karim asked, and how the, you can control the discussion by asking a very a specific question. And the other thing is the environment, eh? How we're all like a little tense right now. All you guys are tense for no reason. I don't know what the hell is going on. But you guys have to take deep breaths. You guys are acting too nice. Get get comfortable. Honestly, the whole discussion today was about um, not our only religious uh, growth, but as general, general, general men, like how our views have changed. For example, 10 years ago, what did you think about school, for example? What did you think about uh, work? What did you think about marriage? And how has your views changed? That's where I wanted the discussion to go. Mm. But see how quickly the environment kind of got to us and the camera affected us and we started acting a little more like tense? Yeah, yeah. That's one thing we can talk about right now. Is don't let the like how Malana Sab said uh, that sometimes the media controls our narrative for us too much right Malana Sab you said that right right Malana Zishan Sab that's exactly what we're saying like the world wants to tell us how to think and we're gonna say no 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 we have a heritage like how you said we have a complete heritage of how to, uh, there were great thinkers and uh, amazing minds and they controlled the what's happening what was happening in the world and uh, where was i yesterday yeah i was yesterday or the day before with marana hamza maqbul from us and he was talking about how some of the books that are written in islamic history even within the islamic culture they're so rare as books there's no john genre for that type of book like sharu ma'anil athar he said it's a book that doesn't even have a feel like what feel does it in why is it so rare in the way it's written so How is it rare? Like, is it like a general much, thing? No, it's a very hadith-based book. Okay. But it's written so different than any other hadith book before or after it. Okay. And Alaw Sunan, he said, <coughs> is a book that's written, but it's so rare the way it's written. Mm. So it just shows us as Muslims were great thinkers. So that's where I think the discussion we wanted to take is uh, <clears throat> how does a young man, how his mind changes let me tell you a very embarrassing story so we know where we're going with this, okay? I have a very embarrassing story. I don't think I ever told you guys. When I was in Madrasa, Darul Zakaria, 
uh, there was a radio station that we used to log into and listen to the radio Islam. It was Saturday nights or whatever. So they would have nasheeds, questions, call-ins. So once they had a discussion on marriage, I think. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to embarrass myself because I was so smart. So I called in and they were talking about marriage. I'm like, guys, what's so hard about marriage? You guys are making it sound so hard. <laughs> can you guess me? Can you guess what they asked me? <laughs> guess what they asked me? <laughs> what was the question? How old I, I told. I was like, I was like 22. No, that's what they. That's probably what they. No, asked. they would ask me that. Like, how old are yeah, you? Yeah. Or they would could ask me. What was the, what was the question? I told them. No, I told them. You, you guys are talking about marriage, but you're making it sound so hard. Mm -hmm. You you told them. <laughs> yes, yeah, so on the radio. Okay. <laughs> so so can you guess what they said next? They're like, just guess. Guess what? Guess what they would have said? They asked you if you were married. Thank you, sir, Mr. Anonymous. That they asked me like, bro, are you married? <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not. I'm in a freaking mother right now. Very young. They're, they're like, call us back when you're married. I'm like, oh shit, I can't call back now. <laughs> so that's the whole thing. You think life is a certain way, uh -huh. and then life throws you a curveball, and then you realize, shit, it ain't like that. Mm -hmm. It's very different. True. So what you call a bad day at work? I mean, at school, at high school. Is nothing compared to a hard day in college. Mm -hmm. A hard day in college is nothing compared to a hard day at work. Right. And a hard day at work is nothing compared to a hard day at home. So what you claimed as a hard day in high school is a joke, but you don't realize it. So when you, when for example, a college, a high school kid goes up to their mom and dad and goes, Mom, I had a really hard day. How does a mother and father tell him that you're a baby still? It's so hard to tell him that mm -hmm. because they might get offended. But at the end of the day, we have to like tell people there's different uh, existence or different mm -hmm. levels of life where you are going to feel more, you're going to realize how more complicated it is than that. Like for example, the other thing, uh, when we see haram happening, when you were a kid, you were told, just go tell them it's haram. Mm -hmm. And as you said in your beautiful story, mm -hmm. Your childhood story you were told as a child that oh you can't play with the opposite gender cool <coughs> but how hard was that to live by? right away it made you dysfunctional and you, you said you, you felt the outcast right away right. so that's how it is life is way more complicated don't make big claims and uh, I think that was, that was one thing I wanted to really really get across in today's podcast was what you like for example uh, and i'll give an example of this for example the lectures i was giving 10 years ago i'm so, ha so happy they're not online because the stuff that i would have said would have made me look very dumb but i'm happy they're not out there <clears throat> so same thing with us who have social me social media instagram facebook you don't want to be saying ridiculous things because it might come back to haunt us and many of these famous youtubers right anonymous yes <laughs> all these people when they are when they when their old videos come up, don't they have so much problems? Yeah, yes. It's the propaganda of the liberals. <laughs> yeah. Propaganda of the liberals, but but it, it is the woke the woke left. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the point is, but the point. Talking like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> but but it's true, isn't it? Like what you said came back to bite you. We have the Arabic saying, "Inna al bala muwakkalun bil mantiq." All problems are related to what you utter. All your problems are related to what you utter. That's why Mr. Anonymous wants to stay anonymous because he's like, yeah, why am I going to get myself in trouble on this stupid podcast when I can stay out of trouble and make good money? <laughs> Other people can become martyrs for society, not me. Good job. <laughs> so. I'm like, yeah, that can louder. No, you're too quiet. Louder, louder, louder. Huh? Uh, sure. Why not? Nice and loudly, please. Okay, so. Like what you're mentioning here, um, if we were to see this in a current example of like, yeah. and not just current example of one person, but rather many people out there who have probably in history have done a lot of things, you know, like for example, cases that come out against them, like years later, this happened years ago, okay, 20 years ago. Yeah. It's not easy to make a claim that everyone has a clean history. Of course, <laughs> people have done things in their life, right? Yes, yes. But yes. we can't say that 20 years later, the person is the same. Just as you were mentioning, one of the 10, 10 years make all those differences in a person. The way, the way he thinks is completely changed just in 10 years, right? So if a case is coming out 20 years ago, and this man has already switched and changed <laughs> two times after that, I'm like, 
he's probably repented from Islamic view, or if, even if you're looking at another, he's grown up, matured up, yes. right? And yet he's being held accountable for something he has done 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, it would become like a bit unfair in that sense where, yeah, if a punishment is done, you hold them accountable instantly and like, you know? Like a big crime. Uh, like a big crime or so yeah. on. But if 20 years later, something like that is happening. So likewise, a current example, for example, Andrew Tate, yeah, controversial figure, whatever it is, right? But if you were to go into his history, he had a webcam business or so on. And because of that, <coughs> if you were to pull out situations and then be like, oh, well, he did this 20 years ago yeah. and hold him accountable for a lot of stuff that maybe he doesn't, because currently he doesn't have all of yeah. those businesses that yeah. are allegedly. Around. Yeah, allegedly, okay? So now to hold him accountable for that, again, how that system works, it's, it's hard yeah. to kind of digest right away. But there should be that uh, fair... Like, of course, you have to get justice. Yes. You have to get justice because what has happened, it doesn't instantly cure the trauma for the person that the victim was or it happened to. But at the same time, to hold someone accountable 20 years later when he has completely repented or when he regrets every single moment of what he has done. So I think there should be a fair balance to that. And if you can, inshallah, mention something. You said something amazing, bro. I just want to highlight it again. You, what you just you used two terms. It was amazing. You said judge being uh, fair and to judge him hmm. to be fair to the victim that yes. happened, happened and now 20 years later if you were to punish him yeah like to make a fair punishment because now it's a whole different yeah uh, so i guess but this is what you're hinting towards is if it's an actual crime against a certain certain human yeah and the crime comes up 20 years later for sure the person has to be jailed or whatever accordingly yeah but you use the word fairness and that's where uh, utterances they're not crimes in the sense that if it's just like a hate speech or racist comment or whatever the guy grew up by now it's been 20 years look at his last 200 videos if he's online if he hasn't said anything racist then why are you going to pull out something from 20 years ago and try to just take away his followers and his uh, momentum and make it sound like it happened yesterday exactly and then accuse him as if like see this is what his view is exactly people so change I think that's where hate comes in and honestly this one thing as young men you need to realize is there's haters out there no matter how you twist and turn it, whether they're religious people, irreligious people, Muslims, different culture, different races, people, everybody has a little bit of hate, a little bit of jealousy. So don't don't flaunt your blessings <clears throat> and don't come across as too hard and too tough and whatever. People hate that. I'll, I'll tell you a very uh, brutal story. There was this kid from one of the Kazakhstan or something, or it's a big kid very big kid my god I think his fist was twice the size of my hand he was a really big kid and uh, he, he came here and he's like oh yeah I got jumped by 10 guys in high school because nobody in high school can do anything to me so I got jumped by 10 guys just to take him down because he's such a big kid and he's an innocent kid but he's just such a big kid they, they couldn't deal with the amount of power he had physical power so they had to attack him with chains and everything this is an old story but that's how jealous people are. So never underestimate jealousy, the competitiveness that people have with their contemporaries. Mm -hmm. If somebody's exactly at your stage in life, he just graduated this number of years ago and he's also Imam, there'll be some grudges. So just be careful, don't expose yourself and say all your humble things to that one dude. He might just throw it around for no reason. What's the reason that uh we have like you know when it comes to children, people are really lax with them. That, you know we won't judge them, we won't hate on them and stuff. But then when people start to get older, people start to hate on them a lot. What's the reason for wow, that? Wow, that's deep, man. Morana Sabi is asking, like, why is it that we're so easy on young kids? As soon as they grow up, we become hard on them. I think it's the pressure to grow up, the pressure to want them, for us to want them to grow up. There's a really simple saying. And it might summarize all the wisdom. It says when a kid is small, we want them to start talking and start walking. Start talking and start walking. As soon as they learn those two things, we tell them the opposite. Sit down and stop talking. So every time a kid talks, what do we tell them? Shh, shh, be quiet. So I think that's basically the summary of all powers that we have as, as humans. <clears throat> Whatever strength you have, good for you, you have it. But don't use it. When you go to like martial art classes, <coughs> they have the little mantra you have to say before you start fighting. And one of them is I'll use all this strength 
to protect others. So I think uh, if I was to summarize that, it would basically be we take it easy on learners, mm -hmm. but once they claim to be big boys, big girls, and big kids, then we tell them, come on, act like it. And they usually fail because mm -hmm. they don't see the quick growth that they're expected to show. The way I look at it. <laughs> <coughs> louder, he's louder. The way I look at it is... Once a person gains enough knowledge, mm -hmm. there comes a confrontation. And the confrontation is of the death of the sensei. Oh, we will talk, uh, we'll elaborate on that point as well soon enough. That, understand what that, that was. nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> well, when we digest it, it'll take some time. Uh, let us sink in for a bit. But just to continue on your point here, I think uh, also from my perspective what it is, is because I think I was having this, this discussion with my wife. And uh, how they speak on... because. We're big on having children, okay? A lot of children, and as from Islamic view as well, like in, uh, in general, like we should have kids, you know? Like uh, even scientifically speaking, that's what your body wants. It wants to live, right? Mm -hmm. Each, every cell of your part wants to uh, live forever, remain. Like it wants to remain and continue. So, and that's obviously through your progeny, through your kids. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, there's also an agenda that is pushed that, you know, try to limit your kids. One uh, son, one daughter. That's your Canadian or American dream and so on. So I was having this discussion and she would constantly give me examples of her sister who has a lot of children. And she would like, look, see, they weren't taken care of. Look, they were fighting over there. Or they were, she would just bring those specific scenarios that see, it's so hard on the mother. She cannot take care of all of them. And it's so hard on the kids because they don't get that love. And then I was thinking about, I was like, listen, um, at the same time, if we analyze the kids, that is literally their tarbiyah. What you are looking at as, oh, he is going through a hard time because he's not getting love. I am like, this is exactly what's going to happen when he grows up. He will grow up and he won't get that motherly love right away. Like it's, At least not from the outside world. So isn't that training him being in that small stage? Like as a kid, he's getting that tra the treatment or at least he's being trained for the real world already. I'm like, that is one pro because the mother is yeah she's occupied because there's a lot of kids so it's hard for her to give everyone that full attention but i said at the same time that full attention does not remain all her life to the kids so let them learn with one another they're her older the other the kids older brothers and siblings and work because it's not like they live a bad life they live an amazing life because i went to their house one time and i seen them the way they were playing with each other the kid one of the kids he can't even reach the pot but he's serving his own food wow. i'm like i'm 40 and i can't like enough but I, I'm old enough, but I cannot still serve myself no like this. It. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like, we think twice before serving ourselves. And this little kid, he's serving himself. Like, he's not dependent on his mother that mom's going to come and serve me. Because he knows mom's occupied. It's just the way he's growing up. Mm -hmm. And likewise, his siblings, the way they're growing up, they're training one another. And they're already, they already have that system where one is like a trainer, the older <laughs> one is a trainer, the younger ones are learning, and so on. And this process is continuing for them. <laughs> And I was like, what's happening here? Because any point she would bring up, I would be like, if I relate that, relate that to the real world, I'm like, he's already benefiting from it. He's already learning before us. He's learning before he's even put into the situation. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, you know, that, that quick transition from like, they're, so, they're treated so nice, and then all of a sudden people start like judging them and they're so rude <coughs> to them eventually. It's because they haven't been prepared for that. And maybe if they had more children mm -hmm. from that perspective, and inshallah you can add on to that too it would have helped them later for their actual this brings us to a very very <clears throat> serious discussion which is the mistakes that we make and the growth that comes after the mistake my big question to everybody here get ready is the growth is justifiable the person made a mistake and he learned the big question is, what about the harm that he caused while learning from that mistake? Is that justifiable? Depends who he harmed. Okay. Okay. So now, let's apply that to relationships. Okay? So a guy, he wanted to get married. Mm -hmm. He was 17. He got married. Whatever, 18. He got married. He doesn't have all the manliness of maturity, calmness and whatever, whatever, whatever. So he ended up with a divorce at age 20. And then within 
three years he gets married again. Now the question is the amount of harm he caused that girl by being with her for two years, and let's just say she got pregnant also, and she had a child, and now he left her. Now the question is him making mistakes, being exposed to all these things, and now he's growing up. Many young men, they call me, Sheikh, 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 I made a few mistakes. Does that mean all this was taqdeer and destiny? And it was all, you know how we say it was for the good? We use that sentence so often, we don't realize that's a really, like I feel like that's a really wrong sentence. Because as Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, we don't believe whatever happens, happens for the good. That's where Dhul Qarnayn's story, I mean, uh, <coughs> Khidr al Islam story comes in. Where the young man, he was uh, it, it killed because he was going to grow up to be an irreligious person. So it's really a complex story, but the whole point is that Allah doesn't have to destine the best things for every single person. He leaves you to your mistakes. You can't take your mistakes and call them uh, that all oh, the outcome was good. For example, this guy that we talked that the story that we made up, he had a divorce and he married somebody better. Let's say that. So does that mean the first mis marriage that he ended up with a divorce was that a good thing for him? Uh, outwardly was good for him, but the amount of damage he caused is not a good thing. So this is where all the trials of life. We should be so wise that we shouldn't make that mistake in the first place. For some reason, people, if you look at motivational talks, people will talk about their losses as if they're pride. Like, oh, I had this problem and I had this problem and I got out of it. If you cause all those problems to yourself, why are you bragging? Right? Like, why are you bragging about all your wrongs? Good thing you came out of it. Alhamdulillah, you got out of it. But the fact that you were in that big bad mess... That doesn't show that you were a responsible person. So that basically what it means is we are. <clears throat> this is where the, the 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 convert Muslim dilemma comes in. We bring up a convert Muslim to the mosque. They have terrible histories, but now they became Muslim, so we put them up as heroes. And their average, the average uh, imam in that mosque is way more inspirational. He was a young kid. He was 15. He became a hafiz. He's an alim by age 20. And we, nobody talks about him as a hero. But what we do is we take that guy, he had like 50 girlfriends in the rap world, and then finally he's a Muslim, and we put him up as a hero. So you see how we're doing injustice to the Muslim community, the young kids? We're telling them if you make a lot of mistakes, when you come back, we'll love you more. But if you stay clean, you're okay. Mm -hmm. So this is where I think uh, uh, expect, uh, accepting our mistakes and so on is not a good thing. In fact, we should be so smart, we should have made dumb mistakes in the first place. If that connects to the Discussion. So I think it is good, Mulana Sab. Going back to your initial uh, comment, why are we so hard on big kids? Is because they have a big life to live now. So why should they be making mistakes? For example, a kid buys a car at age 18. You want to tell him everything, like, bro, if you mess up, you're going to kill yourself in that car. You want to say that a thousand times to him. It's because he will kill somebody in the car, isn't he? Yes? It's the idiots that are brave and the wise <laughs> that are cowards. If you truly think thing. about it, right? It's the young man. Getting into a marriage because he's very brave, but he's an idiot. Yeah. But it's the old wise man who's a coward and he's afraid of marriage. And he thinks and thinks and thinks and thinks and. Those are both extremes, man. But, but that's how the world works. No, we can't. We work in extremes. You can't be overly you have safe. Right and wrong. You black can't, and white. No, you can't be overly safe. We're too reliant on the great. Listen, listen. You you can't play so safe. You can't be like. Uh, you can't be so safe and say oh, the guy never got married because he just wanted to never make a mistake in marriage. And you can't have the other extreme where the guy gets married with his eyes closed and ends up with a divorce. I'm not saying that's what happened. What I'm saying is that's what is happening. That's where we come in. The Mr. Grace channel where we teach the world the middle path. Where well, you, yes. The other day I was reading an article on... <clears throat> Nice uh, we were reading an article on like how people with a low IQ, mm -hmm. they are the ones that tend to become successful. Oh, yeah. And people with a higher I IQ, they tend to not become successful. It's successful in terms of like, you know, having big things, doing big things in life. And the uh, reason they mentioned that, and that is because the guys with the low IQ, the guy with the more IQ, he would think of a lot of pros and cons. Mm -hmm. And when he's putting all the cons <coughs> together... He'll probably conclude that, you know, it's not a good idea. Making loss this decision. aversion. That's what they yes. call it. Loss aversion. Like uh -huh. avoiding their losses. I'll avoiding the losses. So he'll just back off. It's like, oh, it has risks. Let's not do it. And a guy with a low IQ, he'll be like, you know what? I want to do it. 
he won't think of what the negative impact so he'll just get into it with his heart and uh, yeah maybe he'll face a few problems but that's exactly how you see great successful people it's not like they've made but it to, we're, through what we're else. talking about is marriage is failing because these people mm-hmm. go in without thinking marriage no wait wait no, the way we're sitting in front of the camera we are those dumber people who are looking for the benefits of it and you are that overly smart I'm the guy puppet master. who's the lost aversion guy who's never gonna make it anywhere. I'm the puppet master so, whatever the hell you are they can't hear you <laughs> So whatever you're doing, Take your head off. but I guess that was a very deep point. So you can't be too safe, oh, and that's fine, where fine. the this is where the financial thing comes in. Let's finish off on the last topic on work. You can't be too safe with your money if you want to start a business. Mm. Exactly. If you got four hundred dollars saved up and you want to buy some shoes or some whatever, you want to sell them. Go ahead, do it. What are you gonna lose? Four hundred dollars? It's okay. This is where I'm being. I'm saying the opposite of what I just said before. This you can't be getting married and making mistakes there, but if you have some money and you want to start a business, just go for it. You can lose four hundred dollars, but you'll realize what is good to sell, what is what is not gonna sell. But what if the four hundred dollars <coughs> is all you have? And you'll that's get, the you'll get more. You're getting hungry. You'll, you'll get four hundred dollars again. Don't worry well, about right. it. Just repeat that. What he said, the only the place goes through. Yeah, so basically, he said, what if what, what if the only thing you have is a four hundred dollars, and that's fine. Money comes and goes. So I don't think you should be... And by the way, we have the Usuli thing in Hidayah that is Al-Ghunmu <clears> bil <throat> The right to make money mm-hmm. is uh, connected to the possibility of losing money. Mm-hmm. So that's where halal business is only halal because you're putting the money in the risk. That's where the guaranteed money in whatever the schemes we say like interest for example it's so guaranteed we, we don't see that as business so Mono, what classifies uh, like the question would be what classifies like a risk because if you have a very high chance of profiting compared to uh, which That's is 50 50 that should be fine having a high chance of like making a 90 percent probability of you getting like you increasing your wealth That's would, good would, then. That, would that still fall into risk i don't think so i'm not going to go too deep into fiqh because i'm not too smart in fiqh but I don't think that's a problem. And that's how I look at any other loss aversion and the benefit procuring benefit situation. For example, buying a car. You can easily get into a car crash and destroy your rating in insurance companies and pay thousands of dollars and be criminal situation when you kill somebody in driving. But most of us don't end up in that situation. We all use our cars to go to workplaces and make tons of money. So if somebody was overthinking the possibility of running somebody over with a car, so I'll never buy a car because I never want to hurt anybody. Don't be overthinking and avoiding too much losses, right? And avoiding it too long. Mm-hmm. So I think we can wrap up over there somewhere. If you want to say anything geez, else, so we can wrap up. Here. So what's your take on uh, the aspect of growth uh, related to us? <coughs> All right, so, um, you know, um, <coughs> talk about, we're like saying, comments. no, we're saying something like, uh, I think you said a good point. Um, how you talk about like um, the kid that thinks that yeah, you know maybe I should make these mistakes that maybe like, and then I'll say like oh yeah you know I'm yes, all up please forgive me and stuff. Yeah, and you know? I something from I, yeah, so I think that's very important because um, I think uh, all of us growing up we all thought about that, and like we all like picked the uh, uh, avenue you know. Okay. We're all like oh you know um, I'm either gonna be. Like, who am I going to be, like, growing up? Ooh, you know what okay, I'm saying? Okay. And, like, in, 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 like, growing up in this society, like, you want, like, respect. Ooh. You want power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Social. Uh, yeah. What you want to be in your social circle. Yeah. Please go ahead. You're saying something so, amazing. Yeah. Um, basically, like, that's, uh, it's very important, um, like, that part of your life. Because in this society, like, there's only, like, bad influences to follow. You know what I'm saying? And... And so a lot of the kids here, they'll, they'll follow like, um, you know, like whatever is shown to them as powerful, like the, the gangster or like the, you know, the big um, rapper mm-hmm. or whatever, you know, because <coughs> um, that's the that's how you become someone in like in this Shortcuts. society. Shortcuts. You know what I'm saying? Shortcuts. Um, but like, but we, when we like, when we like um, read about uh, real people like Sahabas or you know, like conquerors, like Salah Hadin, then you you, be, you become like um, intrigued and you'll get influenced by them, but you don't see them in society. So, 
um, a lot of times kids go like how their society goes, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I guess that's what we started off with, right? Let yeah. Me yeah. Can, I, can I also say Yeah, please, please, please. Yeah, some people <coughs> like, um, like doing um, like good stuff, you know? Some people like, you know, it's like smoke a lot of cigarettes, mess up their voice and stuff. It's not good, you know, <laughs> but it's all good, you know. So people pick different <laughs> paths. That's what we're talking about, growth, you know. The problem yeah, is go you're ahead, scared. Go ahead. The problem is you're scared. <laughs> YOLO. Well, no, would it Yolo. be fair to say those are the victims today? Like, Don't you have to be at a cigarette advertisement somewhere? In our <laughs> yeah, kids, kids, don't don't spend spend cigarette. Cigarette. Uh, He mentioned Salahuddin. They're the real men, right? The yeah. real people we should look up to. But I'm saying in our time. Wouldn't they be the ones that are classified as the victims or at least labeled in certain ways, ways which you'll just eventually have no value or respect for them because, again... Yeah, that's Because true, of like, political situations. Yeah. Oh. They yeah. might uh, be great heroes, but yeah. they're just not showed that way. Yeah. So regarding this whole topic, Allah SWT mentions in the Quran that uh, Allah SWT will take you from stage to stage in life, right? And... Uh, me myself growing up like uh, my dad he used to give me like a lot of love a lot of uh, attention and stuff mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. and that kind of made me like the person who I am today like a made me like a very intelligent alim I feel like mm -hmm. but afterwards when I, when I, after I, I got kicked out of the alim course and I graduated um, you yeah, know I sorry, I, I, sorry I graduated from the alim course okay. I found a lot of hate and a lot of you know disrespect happening even within my family not only my family but in the whole society right and I think the one reason for that the monster manager was mentioning that the adults, the, the, the real adults who are you know older than above 20, 30, 40, they just want to see you, they just want to see you grow up. They don't want you to be a kid anymore, right? And uh, I feel like for all these for all these kids who are you know growing up and you know they have these issues growing up, the only the only like uh, real fix for this is that they have to connect themselves connect themselves with one of the works of Deen, right? Like the Bikram Salah he was brought into this world for a couple of muqasid, right? One of them was to sell wolf, you know, doing islah of people. One of them is reading the ayat to people, reading hikmah to people, re reading hadith to people, reading Quran to people. And this basically ties in with tabliq and tasawwuf, or, or does it tabliq. So, you know, this whole problem that we have, um, you know, that, you know, people, they grow up and they don't they find it difficult to <coughs> advance in life and they have, you know, this growth problem. It, uh, it gets fixed just by following one of the works of deen. Because you're, official, you're aff affiliating with something and that the growth within that will also be your own growth, right? So try to connect yourself to one of the works of Dean. Try to affiliate with the belief. Once I've, I found within myself that once I started joining the belief and you know doing my mamulat and so and whatnot, mm -hmm. it was I found my life to become a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And people have difficult lives after 20, 30, They go, you know what? My life is difficult. I'm just going to commit suicide or something. Mm -hmm. But a person who you know mm -hmm. does this kind of stuff and you know who starts to pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, starts loving Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Allah Taala gives them a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to try to make that intention, inshallah. For sure. Morana Sab, you brought it a full circle all around. Thank you. So we, if we can summarize what we talked about, uh, young men and brothers and Moranas, we talked about educational struggles. We talked about marriage. We talked about income. And uh, talked about social right now. What you talked about is uh, our social influences are no good. And that's where I think we need to. This is one big topic. I think we want to talk about this next ulama. Is thing. The, the thought of learning to grow slowly don't rush your growth and that's uh, inshallah we'll get to that discussion and you're saying what Anasab, if you can't find your identity go to one of the religious efforts and uh, work on it and find your uh, strength that's why I feel like I started high school when I finished high school I just fell, I fell in love with religion so that's where I went with, with a little bit of strength that I had I went to madrasa and that's where I feel like, okay, I love, I love Islam and I'm coming back and I'm trying to do this. So I think you're right, like all of you have done, is you had your strengths, you went to religion and you got more inspiration from there. So I think that's a really good way to finish it off. F uh, find your niche in religion, wherever you can serve in the religion, jump in and do amazing. Jazakumullah khaira to all the ulama and the hafaz. Allah bless you all. And Jazakumullah khaira. Allah bless you and I hope it come the recording and the audio is good and inshallah we can all sit back and listen to it and laugh at it we'll have anonymous next time don't worry we'll have anonymous in the front well, after hundreds uh, thousands of <laughs> <laughs> okay assalamu alaikum oh exactly 40 minutes almost